I want you to think about that time in your life when you were most proud of yourself. Your finest hour, your greatest moment. Maybe you were really brave or kind. Maybe you were really strong. You have it? This talk is not about that. <laughs> because your finest hour will never help you discover your life's purpose. It might show you what you're good at. It might show you what you like. But it will never help you discover your mission, your calling, your why. And the world desperately needs you to discover your purpose. And I want to help you. First, I need to tell you a story, though. I want you to picture this, but at age 16. I was about <clears throat> 60 pounds lighter, 70 pounds lighter, <laughs> and I had this kind of shaggy, unkempt hair. So I want you to picture this, this younger, skinnier, hairier version of me in high school gym class. So I would have been wearing a, an orange and blue reversible gym shirt with a panther, which was our mascot right in the center. And these, these god-awful, really short shorts that barely covered my chicken legs. And on this particular day, we were in the field house. So when you're picturing me, picture me in a, with, on um, some really stained indoor outdoor carpeting and really bad fluorescent lighting. Gym teacher, as usual, was nowhere to be found. I think he was back in his tiny office planning out the uh, football season. And so dozens of teenagers wandered around aimlessly like pubescent inmates in a prison yard. Now, <clears throat> a few feet from me stood a boy named Michael. Now, I didn't know Michael very well. Michael spent his entire life trying to be invisible. But Michael's feminine gestures and feminine features outed him. Now, Michael was, is, probably gay. But in high school gym class, being gay is not a sexual orientation. It's a, it's a scarlet letter. It's an abomination. It's a, it's a four-letter word. <clears throat> now, I'll confess, I didn't even really notice that Michael was standing there until Vic, one of the, the scarier school bullies, walked up. And now, Vic had permanent grease stains under his fingernails. <clears throat> and he'd cut the sleeves off of his gym shirt so it resembled a, um, I don't know what else to call it, a, a wife beater is what the term is. And Vic walked right up to Michael, got right in his face, and just glared at him. And then without saying a word, he sucked up all the snot in his throat and he spit it right onto Michael's crisp, clean shirt. I mean, it hit the panther dead between the eyes and just kind of oozed down. And Michael froze. I mean, he froze like a white-tailed deer on a country road at dusk. He didn't even wipe it off. <clears throat> when this happened, I looked around, and I, and I hoped that I would find some of Michael's friends who were nearby and would come to his aid, but I was the closest spectator by far, and everybody else was, was too busy flirting to notice the, the Lord of the Flies unfolding here in gym class. <clears throat> and, and Michael realized that. And Michael looked at me with pleading eyes. I mean, his eyes begged me to intervene. Michael needed a hero. Didn't have to be a big hero. Didn't have to be an all-American hero. A um, skinny hero with shaggy hair and, and, and chicken legs would suffice. I would suffice. At that moment, I was the hero that Michael needed. Well, that was the moment that Vic noticed me because, because Michael was looking to me. And Vic stole my eye contact away from Michael. And he kind of leaned in and he squinted even deeper than he normally did. And he wiped a little phlegm off of his face and he said, what are you looking at? And time stopped for me there. Because rarely in our lives are we faced with such an obvious case of right versus wrong. Strong versus weak. Good versus evil. Rarely do we have an opportunity to make such a difference in someone's life with so little effort. With a few words, I could validate Michael's humanity and stand in that gap between his darkest fears and his deepest vulnerabilities. At most, it would cost me a black eye. Probably wouldn't even cost me that. 
Now, I didn't understand at the time, but I did feel a gravity in the moment that was bigger than Vic, bigger than Michael, bigger than me. So I took a deep breath, balled up my fists, girded my loins, and I said, nothing. I turned and I walked away. And the last thing I saw was Michael looked down at his feet and Vic turned towards his prey. And immediately, immediately, I felt different. I felt lesser. It wasn't that I felt less of a man. I felt less human. I felt less me. And that moment haunted me. I did my best to forget it for years. And I, and I made excuses. I told myself, <clears throat> Michael wasn't really my responsibility. I told myself there really was nothing I could do anyways. But each time I made an excuse, I felt a little bit less like me. Then one day, <clears throat> in college actually, a dear friend helped me to face the fact that I had simply failed. I'd let Michael down, I'd let myself down. Someone had needed me in a dark hour, and I had done nothing. By the standard of my own ethical code, I had committed an act of complete and total moral cowardice. And that realization hurt. It hurt bad. I had ripped the scab <clears throat> off this memory, and it bled. But, but, it showed me who I am by showing me who I never want to be again. Never again do I want to be the person who is a mere witness to someone else's suffering. I discovered that my purpose is to stand with people in their darkest, worst, scariest, loneliest moments. I discovered my purpose in the moment I failed it. And I've tried to remember that ever since. And that realization has brought me to some amazing places, some holy places, places where I could be with a person in the single worst hour of their life. Like calming a woman who had been raped 45 minutes earlier in an icy sewer drain. Showing a grieving mother where her son's frozen body had been discovered only a week earlier. Helping to hide three men who were in imminent danger of being arrested and tortured. Now, I'm not gonna kid you, it's also taken me to some pretty awkward places. I had a knife pulled on me, I uh, was threatened by a street gang, I, uh, true story, accidentally got arrested in an African dictatorship, but it's all been worth it. I discovered my purpose in the moment I failed it, and it has made all the difference. But enough about me. I want you to discover your purpose. You ready? I want you to think about that time in your life when you most deeply disappointed yourself. Not because you failed to achieve some goal, but because you failed your moral compass. Maybe you, um, maybe you like me, let somebody down. Maybe you were disloyal to a friend. Maybe you lied to somebody who trusted you. Push past the minor disappointments. I want you to get to that moment, the story you never tell anyone, the memory you try to forget. When you wake up in the middle of the night, what haunts you? You have it? You discover who you are. You discover your purpose in the moment you fail it. Now that memory you have, <clears throat> your worst moment, there's only two things you can do with it. Only two things you can do with it. One, you can bury it. And with it, bury a piece of yourself. You can make excuses for yourself. And each time you do, you will lessen your commitment to the values that make you who you are. Or you can let it hurt. You can let it bleed. You can let it show you your life's purpose in the moment you failed it. 
You can let it show you who you are by showing you who you never want to be again. You discover your purpose in the moment you fail it. Now, I told you at the beginning to forget your finest hour, <clears throat> and here's why. You cannot hear your inner voice over the public applause. In those moments, if you try to define yourself around those moments, when you got trophies and awards and adulation, you will mold yourself in the image of what the world wants you to be. But that dark spot, that story you don't tell anybody else, that moment you wish had never happened, that is truly yours and only yours. You discover your purpose in the moment you fail it. And the world desperately needs you to discover your purpose. Let me tell you something I learned since I left North Central College. The world needs saving. The monsters, they're real. The shadows, they're pitch. The storms, they're perfect. There are dragons to slay and there is evil to conquer. And the greatest contribution you can make to the world is that contribution which is uniquely yours. The world needs heroes. And in this story, you are the only possible hero. Flawed? Mm-hmm. Fragile? Oh, yeah. Frightened? Probably. But you still are the only possible hero in your story. And the world needs heroes. So, discover your purpose in the moment you failed it and become the person the world needs you to be. Thank you.